Hello and welcome to this Flowify tutorial. We're going to construct this spiral stair and while the geometry is quite complex the Flowify will be uh, rather simple. So each step is a component and we want to model a step uh, axis aligned and then we're going to apply a Flowify which represents a combined shear and bend where the shear will give us the rise of the stair and the bend will give us this uh, spiral form. So we're going to start off with this um, rough outline and this uh, these uh, faces have the correct uh, uh, the correct rise and the correct curvature and they represent the the outer wall here. And we can use these directly as a target surface. So we start off by constructing a projection plane. So and that's just a single face like this. And we then group it. Move it over here. And then we're going to connect two adjacent corners on the projection plane with two adjacent corners on the target surface, like so. And we group our connection edges. And then we select the the target surface, which is the group, the connection edges, and the projection plane and we group it like so. And if we turn on the hidden geometry we can see that the target surface consists of five faces. And we may want a corresponding grid on our uh, projection plane. And we can either just map a piece of dummy geometry like this. And we get our grid. Or we could just select the uh, the support group and then uh, select impose grid and we will get a grid like this. And the the size of the grid doesn't really matter. And it may matter from the a modeler's point of view, but it doesn't matter from the extensions point of view. And that is because this uh, this axis between the edges is our U axis and it will be scaled uh, and twisted and rotated to fit the corresponding uh, border over here. And the same is true for all borders. So if, if we have a piece of geometry like this that covers our central face and then flow it, it will cover our central face on the target geometry as well, uh, on the target uh, surface as well. And that is true for the U dimension, which is this, and the V dimension, which is this. But the third dimension, the dimension perpendicular to the uh, projection uh, plane, uh, we call that the D dimension. It's transferred directly to the to the target side. So this thickness is 2,000 millimeters, and that is true on the target geometry as well. So if we draw a piece of geometry that covers our five faces, group it, and then run Flowify. And if we then move this group and rotate it into place, we can see that we get a gap here. And that's not what we want. And the reason for this gap is that we have five faces. And the four interior vertices here, they all have a normal which uh, extends in a direction that bisect the angle between two adjacent faces. But the normal at this corner have, have a direction, it has a direction that uh, coincides with this face. But that's not what we want. We want the, the normal in this corner to extend in a direction that bisect the angle between these two faces. And in order to achieve that, we need a new uh, target surface. So we're going to explode these. Then we're going to remove four faces from these two, like so. And then we're going to group this one. So we have a target surface with seven faces. And we're going to use these five central ones. And the two faces at the side, at the either side, they're just padding to ensure the correct behavior at the, the borders here. So we're going to draw a new projection plane, group it, connect it, and 
group the connection edges, and then we group everything, and then we select Impose Grid. So if we draw a piece of geometry that covers the five faces, the five middle faces, and then flow it. And if we then move this one to there and rotate it into place, we can see that we we get a perfect fit. So this is the target surface we're going to use, seven faces, but we're only going to map on, on the, the five middle faces. So we've prepared our geometry here. and This is our uh, basic geometry and it, it is modeled axis aligned. This is our target surface and it has the same height as this uh, this geometry because the height of this geometry is the height we want in the model. So this edge has the same height as the bounding box. And this is our uh, projection plane and it also has the same height. And we're going to start by placing our projection grid, our projection plane. We're going to place it like so. And then we're going to hide our geometry. We connect our projection uh, plane with a target surface, our target grid. We group and group and then we select impose grid. And then we're going to place this uh, geometry so that it covers the five central faces. So we just move it to there and then we're going to scale it like so. So we're now ready to map and we're going to start with this piece. So we select the source geometry and the support group and run Flowify. And we can immediate, immediately see that this is not quite what we want. We want this step to be flat. And in order to achieve that, we need to counter the rise of these five faces with a slope on the, uh, on the source side. And since the source and the target uh, is scaled one to one along the blue axis, we can infer the rise directly on the target surface. And we've constructed a small guide here which represent the rise of these five faces. I'm going to place it, place it there. And then we're going to move this edge straight down and snap it to our guide. And we're now going to map this piece again. And this surface is now flat. Uh, but the extension does not remove coplanar faces, so we're going to use cleanup for that. And the triangulation on the underside is uh, beyond our control, so we want to redraw some uh, some diagonals here to ensure a consistent orientation. And that doesn't really matter, it's just for aesthetic reasons. Like so. And then we're going to smooth this group. And that looks all right. We're going to move this edge down as well. And then we're going to select this wall, the top moldings, and this molding. And we're going to map uh, these five solids in one go. And again, we're going to clean them and smooth, like so. And now we're going to map this piece of geometry, and it is quite complex. It is, I think, 6,500 faces. 
and the time complexity of the extension is uh, completely dominated by the intersect. The actual mapping is uh, is quite fast, but the intersect is uh, is somewhat slow. And this was mapped as a solid, and we're going to employ cleanup. And cleanup calls SketchUp's native validity check. And the validity check removed some faces, so this is no longer a solid. And ideally, we would edit this uh, group and uh, triangulate the lost faces. But we're going to be a bit lazy here, so we're just going to make an undo. So we undo the validity check, and that restores solidity. Uh, but this is a solid with some non-valid faces, but we're going to uh, we're going to uh, accept that for now. And this is our final piece of geometry. I'm going to map it as well. And uh, as you can see, we have already adjusted it so that it uh, coincides with this slope. And again, this will take some time. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to run clean up. And then we're going to undo the validity check in order to restore solidity. Okay, and then we're going to smooth this. And all the ma mapping is now done, but we're going to we're going to uh, extrude this tiny molding on the target side directly. And the reason why we do not map this piece is that we do not want this piece to taper. So we're just going to extrude it like so, and we smooth it. And we now have uh, nine solids, and we're going to make a component out of this. And then we're going to place two copies to check the alignment. And the most important thing is that the <coughs> the seam between the components <coughs> is uh, is uh, smooth like this. We do not have any misalignments or anything. And that's precisely what we wanted to achieve. Now, if we look on the underside, we can see that these faces they are also quad grids. And we're going to use this to make a mapping directly on the underside. So we're going to copy these these surfaces like so, and then we're going to group it, group this, and we're going to move it out a bit. And then we've prepared a projection grid with some three D text on it. So we just have to connect the projection grid with our target surface, like so. And then we group this, and then we run Flyify. going to clean this up and smooth it. I'm going to place this like so. So this is our final result and the point is that it is often much much easier to model axis aligned and then map the the geometry 
to accord with some target surface. And this spiral star could be achieved by other means, but the, this text would, pro would probably be difficult to construct in, uh, in SketchUp. So that basically concludes our, uh, our tutorial. And here's the final result again, and actually this star was achieved by other means, and the alignment between the components is not perfect, it's not visible in this image, but there is quite a lot of misalignment here. So it would have been preferable to construct this with, uh, with Flowify.